My youngest child, Nafi, is five years old, and lately he's been very obsessed with something. One of those electric police cars that a kid can sit in and actually drive around. Not many days go by that he doesn't ask for it for his next birthday or for Christmas. My other kids have things they want too. Uh, Colin wants a new phone, Hannah wants a phone, Bantu wants an iPod, or a phone. Uh, if I'm being honest, there's a part of me that wants to get all of those things for my kids. I mean, what parent doesn't love to see their kids' faces light up with joy when they get their heart's greatest desire? There's no feeling like that. The fact of the matter is, is that I will never be able to get them everything they want. I will never leave them a huge and gaudy inheritance. However, there is one thing that I know I will leave with them, and that's a legacy. The things I get for them and the things I do for them pale in comparison to what I leave in them. Moses knew this. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, Moses is giving the children of Israel one last pump-up speech before they cross over into the Promised Land. And he kicks off that speech with what is now known as the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This would become a phrase that would frame every faithful Jewish person's day, as they would recite it in the morning and once at night, and might often have it written somewhere in their home as a daily reminder. A reminder of what? Well, among other things, a reminder that it doesn't really matter what our kids know if they don't know what really matters. What the Shema does, what this reminder that God is God does, is that it allows us to stress less and to trust more. Life is unpredictable, and this reminder gives us a predictable truth to hang our hats on, no matter what is going on around us. It establishes God as a central figure in our story, instead of our kids. And while the allure of trusting stuff for our contentment is certainly tempting, trusting God is obviously a much better option. Which is why we need to imagine the end. Who do we want our kids to be when they grow up? While it would be nice for them to be financially well off, I think most of us who follow Jesus would agree that we would much rather have them be committed followers of Jesus Christ. Imagining the end is about focusing our priorities on what matters most, pointing them to Jesus. Many of us get tripped up because we want our kids' relationship with us to be everything it could be. However, it's much more important that they are pursuing a right relationship with God. Which is why, as parents, we need to be the spiritual leaders for our kids. Now that phrase may scare some of you, but, but stay with me here. All that phrase, spiritual leadership, means is that parents assume the primary responsibility to help their kids take the next step in their pursuit of a relationship with God. It simply means that we leverage our relationship with them to help their relationship with God moving in the right direction. But what does that look like? What, what should you do? Well, I'm not going to give you a checklist because every family and every individual is different. I know, super disappointing. I like the way that Hal Runkle addresses this question in his book, Screen Free Parenting. He writes, You need to create space for your child to develop a relationship with God on their own terms. Does this mean you do nothing? Of course not. You actively create faith discussions throughout your child's development. You introduce them to the faith tradition that's led you thus far, and above all, you live in a way that reflects the highest values of that faith. The ultimate goal of parenting is to launch our children into an adulthood where they are self-directed, decisive, and responsible people. That, my friends, is what imagining the end looks like. And with that, I will leave you with this question. What is one step that you can take this week to move your kid's relationship with Jesus in the right direction? Notice, I didn't say leap, just take a step. Thanks for joining us for the Parenting Minute, or two, or three. And we'll see you next time.